today I would like to give you uh, my attempt at installing this Yos e-bike e conversion kit onto this, uh, well, my friend's bike, which is a Carrera Vulcan, which is a medium size frame. Uh, I'm going to start this video by giving you a very brief uh, show of what I've done and then later on you can watch the whole film to see me do it if you want to you can skip ahead or skip or not or not watch it but it's my attempt at doing it so let's go over it my installation briefly so this is the bike that I had previously fitted the switch bike kit to so I have done the switch bike on the front wheel and we're doing the Yost power on the back wheel so basically the well, I think your spike to rear wheel and front wheel conversions. Front wheel simple, you just take your front wheel off and swap your tyres over and remount it and that's all. And your brake disc, if you've got brake discs, put it back on and that's you, you've got now the motor done. You just install the rest of the kit. If you're doing a rear wheel conversion, it's a little more complicated. So you take off your original rear wheel. Here's my original rear wheel and that's sticky out bit there on the right hand side. That is where your gears would have initially been. So you remove your gears from the, the drive, I suppose you would call it. Now there's two kinds of these. Uh, there's a freewheel and then there's some other hub kind. This, this is the freewheel one, it's got a ratchety mechanism. The two aren't interchangeable, you have to pick the right one for your bike. So you take your gears off there, off the non-motor wheel, and then you put them on the wheel with the motor on it, then you fit that back in your bike and your brake disc if you've got brake discs, put that on and that gets you your motorised section. Then on this, wait it's the wrong side, with the switch bike kit you put on this disc and sensor that fits on the outside. With the Yost power one, there's one that goes on the inside. Wait, can you, can't even get the phone in to show you. Uh, you see, yeah, what you can see in there, there's this another one with a wire on it in there. It, you actually have to take the pedal, this arm and the pedal, off the hub or the crank, and then you put the sensor on, and then you put it all back together. The Yost Power Kit comes with the tools for taking this off, you know, pull, pulling it off and pushing it back on. Comes with tools for doing that. It comes with the special tool you need. To get the gears off the back wheel, so all those tools are included in Allen keys. I think the only thing I needed was a big adjustable spanner to put on things. That's basically it, a big adjustable spanner. And then for the Yosper battery, because this was a medium frame, I couldn't get the two screw holes that would be where the bottle holder is to be in the right place to fit the battery. So I've got one screw hole in there and just a couple of big cable ties holding the battery on and then it's just a matter of routing wires to and from things. So you've got wires from the motor, wires from the controller. It's, this kit came with a nice the big controller. Uh, let me just turn it on, let me see it. Can oh turn on oh I've turned the battery off. The battery which has an on-off switch which is nice. Turn that on and turn that on. Here we go. That's a nice controller, you can see your six power levels, five, five power levels, mileage, battery, speed, a few settings you can change like the size of the wheel but we're on 27.5 so or done that. Now the other bit, two bits that I haven't installed in this bike that come, well sort of come with the kit. One is the thumb throttle, this is the thumb throttle and it being a complete continuous part means you have to take off your you know your handlebar grips all your gears and your brakes so you can slide this along to be where it wants to go so you've got thumb activation so you don't have to pedal i think that breaks several uh laws uh no well you're there's european and british thing for pet pedal x have to be pedal assisted and then there's a different one for thumb throttly ones i don't know how that works so I'm leaving it off, but it would just plug into that multi connector wire down there. And the other thing, they supply you with a set of uh, brake levers, one for each side. These are for 
cable brakes but they've got an integrated switch inside them so it knows when you're pulling the brake lever and it cuts power to the motor mostly so you're not running on the throttle you know your thumb throttle and pulling the brake at the same time you're doing that it cuts the power to the motor but this has hydraulic brakes so they do a little kit uh, it's in this box of of them a bit let me dig it out and throw the box away Ugh. So it's basically oh, it's like a reed switch. It's a sticky sensor. The magnets are currently stuck to the thing just now. But you would stick one of these sensors onto this part of your oh, focus. Stick the sensor onto here. Oh. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to illustrate. You would stick a sensor like that on there, so it can be near where your lever levers, and then. You basically just have to take a magnet, the three of them are stuck together at the moment, but they've got little neodymium magnets and you would attach that to your lever near the sensor so that when, when the magnet pulls away from the sensor it knows you are activating the brakes and cuts power to the motor. But at the moment I haven't fitted the thumb throttle or the brake sensor and it still works absolutely fine. Because uh, you're just pedalling, and when you stop pedalling, it cuts power to the motor, and you don't need to. I mean, if you're having difficulty not pressing the brakes and pedal at the same time, you should maybe have a reevaluate your cycling prowess. So, that was my brief introduction. If you want to watch the full installation video, please keep watching, and but feel free to stop now or skip to the end. Right, with Stanley knife in hand, let us open the box. Oh, this, this knife has seen better days. Oh, it is very not sharp. Let's see what is in this kit. Hopefully there's a wheel in here. There is. And it's... And it's black, which is good. Ta-da! Centurial. Okay. Hopefully that is instructions. Uh, so, um, I'm sure there's... Uh, okay, please forgive my ignorance on bikes and such knots, uh, but on the back wheel you've got two kinds of geary things. One's a cassette and the other's something else. Hopefully I've ordered the right kit to match whatever's on this bike. I just looked on that Halfords website and whatever it said that was, I uh, opted for the same kit as it should be because there's two kinds and you need to make sure you order the right kind, otherwise your gears won't fit on the wheel. <laughs> and here is lots of wires and controls, so there's, there's brake doodads in here. I didn't order these but that's what I've got, and they won't work anyway because I've got hydraulic brakes. But that appears to be a pulley brake with a brake switch in it, so you, so the motor knows when you're pulling the brakes. That won't work for us. What else have we got? Uh, oh, that's the tools for taking... I recognise that. That's for getting the cassette bit off the back wheel. I recognise that because I've got one of them somewhere from my bike. We've even got a little packet of... Yeah, Allen keys. That's handy. And that looks suspiciously like the tool for tightening or holding the the cassette bit. You know, you put your chain around it and hold it so you can undo it. I just use an impact driver and whomp it off that way. And in here is uh, ah, it's a little display, the computer display effort that goes on. And did I mention the wires? Another thing, uh, all of the wires and connections in the use kit are exactly the same wires and connections that are on the switch bike kit. Hey, I'm just saying, you draw your own conclusions from that, but let's just say all the connections are the same. Did I mention this kit was half the price of the switch bike kit? No, in here is a wheel. A wheel and a hub motor. Get off the cardboard, friends. Oh, I have to change tyres. Oh, 
Oh, I'm not doing that today. Well, I mean, I have to because it goes on in that order. Oh, uh, yeah. So, there's the whatever the bit inside that makes it go in one direction or the other. Is that a freewheel? Freewheel hub? Freewheel? Something like that. Right, that goes on the back because it's a back wheel. And in this other box. Oh, I'm going to guess it's the batteries in here due to the large please don't die or explode battery pack signs. Where's my salon Shisha! Come on. I'm hoping that in here's like the pedal sensors and whatnot. That's a charger. That's a fuses and some other clips and things. Put them in the charger box. There's a set of keys because you can lock the battery to your bike. And here is the nice battery. A nice large battery. Right, now off the top of my head, I can't remember what capacity the switch bike is. But does this one have a size on it? I can't remember which one ordered. So it's 36 volt. And no, I can't remember what size battery, what capacity is, sorry. But I will look it up and I will tell us later. Right, put that in there, that in there. Am I missing any things? Right, I'm going to tidy this into sense and then I'll bring you back. Well, stage one, unsurprisingly, is uh, take the old back wheel off your bike. Oh, should have said this is a quick release I'd already slightly unscrewed. So I uh, just have to fish the chain off of round the thing. I can just drop it down there and then I'll get the chain off the ta -da! old freewheel. So we need to take this bit off and put it on the new uh, wheel and obviously the brake disc as well. Right, I need all of the tools they gave me. So using the red handled tool with the chain on it, you can hold the cassette freewheel spinning about the gears bit uh, to stop it spinning and then I'm using power tools and the tool they provide that goes into the spline bit and then we will loosen it off hopefully with this little friend here if I've got this right we'll just be able to nip it right off it's it's tight and I'm gonna give it credit for Right, it's me all near didn't work, so I'll just have to do it manually. Holy crappy balls, what the fucking... Dear God, that was tight. Ladies and gentlemen, that was... What's this? It's not got a torque rate, not a 40 newton meters. I suppose it's 40 newton meters and a locking collar. Oh, these gears are going to fall off. I forgot. This, I've not got... Have I got the... No, I've not got the slotting in tool. Right. Where is the other wheel? This bit. This is the bit these gears slot onto. I'm going to have to fish this wire through all those gears. How easy it is to see on here. Let's see how they're all fairly large apart from that one. That one there, see it's smaller, well it matches the same spline as the other one, so you can only put them on in one orientation. Thank <laughs> you. 
Do not, uh, and then the protective plastic. One, and we'll worry about that one at the end, and put our protective cap back over. Right, smashing. That is now the gear set on the hub motor, on the wheel. I just need, no, a brake disc and a tyre. Right, the observant amongst you may have noticed that this wheel is a completely different colour and size. So in my haste, when I got the first kit, I didn't realise that it said 28 everywhere on the box and in every box. Uh, basically, uh, like, basically every box is 28 on it, whereas this is a 27 and a half inch uh, bike wheel. So I realised when I tried to get the other tyre onto the wheel that was too big, it does not fit and would not go. So here we are. Tire is now fitted to the correct size uh, wheel. Obviously, everything's just the same. Put the gears on, tighten them up. Put the brake disc on. Hold on, let me take a round for a moment. So, you just swap your brake disc off your old wheel onto this one. And please, please, for the love of God, brake discs are like razor blades. And I did, I, try, I tried my hardest and I still managed to destroy one knuckle and scuff another one, loosening and tightening these on the thing. I, try, I tried not to punch it, I did, but it's like a razor blade and I just caught it. So the back wheel attaches just with the big nut here in the end and the slotted, you see the slotted washer in there, fits inside the frame. I did have to file the frame ever so slightly and I mean like I just had to take the colour of the blue paint off the inside of where the frame goes. If, there's a, if I can show you under there where it slots in, basically I just had to file it ever so slightly to take the colour of the paint off and it just slotted straight up and in. Brake discs all aligned, gears are aligned, everything goes, oh, go that way, that makes more sense. All spinning true and round and smooth. So that is the wheel fitted. I just need to put the protective nut cover, where is it? The nut cover, feed that bit back down the end of the wire, put over that nut to protect it, and that's that bit fitted. And then we'll move on to mounting the battery, which I think goes into the bottle holder holes, and we'll put the battery in. Hopefully it'll fit in this space, because it's quite a big battery. If it fits in there, that'll be good. And then we'll wire up the rest of the bits, like the pedal sensor, which goes on the other side crank. So I'll probably have to turn this bike round now. Right, let's see what the next stage is. So, using the provided uh, crank puller tool, that ends the right size for the nut, or bolt rather, that goes into the crank. So we'll use the crank, use that to loosen it, and then we'll use the puller around that way to pull the pedal assembly crank off. I'm hoping we can fit the Yoast kit in alongside the switch kit, so I can do a direct comparison. But if not, the switch kit's just attached from the outside, which, I'll give Switch its credit at that point, it's easier to fit this, well, I'm going to say it's easier. If you look at this, it's all cable ties and cable tied into place. Hopefully, the other, uh, the Yoast kit, there's not as many cable ties. Uh, pretty well, you'll have to slack in this nut slightly. And now, I should just be able to undo the said nut. Like that. They're not very tight, because it's not... The nut's just, well the bolt, sorry, it's just stopping it falling off the end more than anything else and it's actually the this bit that's I should unscrew this all the way first so we get some good threads good thread engagement is what I'm looking for maybe we should have even, even added a little bit of grease but I want that in nice and a few, a few, a few good threads And we will try our best to pop it off. I mean, it should go on fairly easily. That's me scratch my pedal already. That's ideal. Need to watch that if you're doing it. All right. So that's tight in there. And now we should be able to wind this in. Till it's tight. And then wind it to wind the pedal off, he said, hopefully. Oh, 
man, that's tight. It's coming though, I can feel it slackening. All right, I'll bring you back once I have a pedal in my hand. That should be it. It's gone slack now. I think it's just the actual switch kit that was holding the springy thing in place. So that is the pedal off and I can take all that out now. Because for putting it on, you just put it on and then put your bolt back in. But we'll get back to that in a minute. So this is the pedal sensor, the one that detects when you are pedaling the bike. And that's the bit that rotates inside there. So this outside plastic bit with the teeth. You can see the teeth on it. Right, I should just take it down. That'll make a lot more sense. Hold on. So these teeth, where's my finger? These teeth in here, in the back, you see them? Those teeth, they engage with, I'm too zoomed in, those teeth. So when you put that on, I'll probably put it around there and try and keep the, uh, the wire out of the way a bit. And then you slide that over the whole thing. Wow, I really need two hands for that. Slide that, goes right over and then goes tight up against the back. I haven't got it. I'm going to need two hands for this. That goes there. And that slides hard up against that bit. So the teeth are engaged, so the black outside bit can't spin, but the inside can spin. And that leaves me a good space where I can poke this wire up and through that hole in the frame. Oh, that's ideal, right there. And then put the pedal back on. I should still be able to use, yes, the switch kit as well. Make sure your pedals are actually opposing each other. Don't make, I might have to take the switch kit off and re, re, uh, reapply it. We shall see if I can jam it in. No, we're okay, we're good. Right, pedals are opposite each other. Put bolt back in the middle. And then wind it all back together and tighten it back down. And we are good to go. Tighten, etc, 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 etc. I have run into a slight snag with the battery pack and it's more probably because this is a medium frame bike than anything else. Uh, this battery pack should be round the other way because it screws into the bottle holder bolts. Right, let me, let me show you, let me make this make sense. Oh, that's a really, really weird angle. I'll come down here a bit. So you would use the key and it locks and unlocks a pin that stops it sliding in and out of its holder. Mine is unlocked at the moment. So if I slide this out, right, so that slides out. And well, you would be able to lift it out of your bike's frame. And normally it goes into the two bolt holes for your water bottle cage. Now the problem with this is my two bolt holes are down here. And this is the integrated controller for the whole system, so there's no extra. If you've seen any of the other really cheap e-bike kits, there's basically a metal box with lots of wires coming to each end and you have to like make a little bag for under the seat or a little bag that goes here and poke all the wires inside it. And this, the Yoast bike kit, the controller is all built into the battery mount. So you basically slide the battery in or off if you're taking it off the bike. Your controller stays there and all your wires are quite nice and tidy. As I say, medium frame. Doesn't quite fit, so I've got one bolt hole, one bolt through the bolt hole for the water bottle holder. And if I could find the great big cable ties that I have somewhere, I would, well, I'm gonna put the battery on, cable tie it into place, and then not remove it for the purpose of testing. But at the moment, I can just slide the thing in, slide it down into place. It is it, but I would lock the lock and that would stop it coming out. And I'll just put a cable, a couple of cable ties around it and that'll hold it securely from moving anywhere. Uh, you do get these rubber pads that go, they're, well, they're curved on one side to go around the frame and then flat for the controller and you put your screws through that and that stops it moving. So I might just put one of them in over the thing in the middle there where it's supposed to be and then put a cable tie in. Cable tie it round and that'll actually hold it nice and securely. I just need to find my big cable ties. 
think they might be in the warehouse. But once that's cable tied in there, that won't move anywhere. And you can just route the wires to where they're supposed to be. That's the wire for the uh, motor in the back wheel. Uh, orange to orange is for the pedal sensor, crank sensor, and the displays up there on the handlebars, which you can't see. I've put the display up there on handlebars. I've just got the thumb throttle to put somewhere. I might not put it on just now because I don't know where it's supposed to go because I've got gear levers on both sides. So there's no, and maybe it would go over that side, but you can't really get it with your thumb. And you have to take your gears off, your brakes off, and your handlebar uh, grip off. Because unlike that one, it's not, let me make this make sense for you. That, the controller is the two halves, you can just splay it and go round your bar, you know, it just does that and it goes round the bar. But the thumb throttle, it doesn't. You have to actually take everything off the bar and slide that along the bar because it doesn't come into two pieces. And it's just a thumb throttle for, you know, if you don't want to pedal, you can just press the thing and thumb throttle it. I might just omit that just now or leave it dangling. Because I don't really want to use a thumb throttle uh, for the purpose of this test or this installation. So that's all kind of ready now. Though the last thing is the hydraulic brake lever sensors. That so it's basically to stop you pushing the thumb throttle and holding the brake at the same time and melting the motor. But I'm going to try it without it to see if it runs. If it runs without the things, I might just leave them off just now. Right, I thought I would just plug everything in, basically. So, from the controller, it goes into this multi-bundle of wires. The green one is the controller. Uh, the other two are going to be left and right brake levers and the thumb controller. And they are not plugged in at the moment. And then that goes all the way to a big multi-plug on the back of the controller box. The other big plug one goes out to the motor. And as I said, the small one goes out to the crank sensor in there. I need to kind of hold all these out of the way. And on the other side of the battery, oh, there is an on-off switch. Here, focus. So if I turn that on, right, that applies battery power. And yes, I'm aware my battery's still moving about. I haven't found the cable ties yet. And then we can turn on the display. You see? There we are. Granted, yes, the battery is not charged, and I can confirm that by pressing the test little light on the thing. Test. Press. Trying to press it. There we go. It's got some charge, but not a lot. I'm trying to see the other side. No, so it's just half, well, less than half charged. Uh, I've set it. If you press and hold set, it goes through a, a set of settings. Wow, this is really hard to see with the reflections. Press and hold set. Uh, I don't know what the first one is, but the second one is the wheel size. And the third one is miles per hour or kilometers per hour. I want miles per hour. And there's, I think you can reset the maximum trip. And I'll just press and set, go back to that. Up and down, adjust your power assist levels from five to zero. So if we set it to five, I'm going to set it to five. And can I? Can I, well, wait a minute, if I had a tripod, I would need to, to use one hand to hold the phone. Look at that. Right, so if I hold the wire out of the way, like that, and then spin the wheel, the back wheel should accelerate. There it goes. I don't know if you can hear it on video, but it's actually got a, <laughs> the motor makes a really nice noise. It's a good wheeew noise. So that's it. So I don't have the brake sensors, the brake lever sensors attached. I don't have the thumb throttle attached either. And uh, it's absolutely working. I could cable tie all these wires and whatnot into place just now and take it out for a test ride, which yeah, I'm gonna have to find cable ties and cable tie all this uh, together and make it look pretty, or at least reasonably not hideous. Right, that was my Yos Power e-bike conversion kit installation, or my attempt at it anyway, and I mean, it went all right, uh, apart from my frame, or my friend's frame, being too small for the battery, or rather the battery being too big for the frame, 
because uh, they do do they do do a battery that goes on. It's almost like a cycle carrier mount thing, like a basket for the back wheel, and it mounts on there, and you can put a full size battery up above the back wheel, which might suit this setup better. And I guess now I should probably take it out for a ride, and then in another video I'm going to do the Yost Power Kit versus the Switch Bike Kit. And that's going to be a good video. That's going to be exciting, that one. Right, um, so any questions, comments, anything like that, as always, leave them down below. And thanks for watching.